All right, so this is the most important part of this uh, presentation here about the personal brand. Why would you build a personal brand? Well, a personal brand, personal branding as the gerund, is the process to market and sell you as a brand in order to gain success in business. Selling you to gain success. So you are a brand, okay? So what's a brand? A brand is any type of religion or marketing around a product, for example, or a, f a soft drink or a clothing line that identifies that clothing line with some type of demographic, like type of people who would buy that, and it has desirable characteristics. And it also has, you know, mnemonic devices. Like I see kids in these uh, <clears throat> kind of hip, kind of cut off, makes me think of, you know, Abercrombie and Fitch, right? That's a brand. You want to be associated with that if you're in that demographic. That brand, you know, is something identifiable. I recognize Abercrombie and Fitch. When I see that, I recognize Abercrombie and Fitch. It's a really good way to create a religion around a, uh, basically a, a product and help fuel that and then it helps drive sales, right? So everything I just said, take out the brand, put you in it. It helps you be recognized. It helps you want to be associated with. It helps build a religion around you and what you're associated with, the positivity of what you create or they see some cool flash on the web, they think of you. How is that not, not the most wonderful thing in the world, right? Creating a personal brand around you, selling yourself. Personal brand also helps you stand out in globalization. Here's an example uh, where I first learned uh, personal branding was from David Samuel. He was a really cool, I think he's an exec at like IBM, and he talked about there's basically four types of people, let's just say. A's, B's, C's, and D's. Okay, you think back to grade school when you're graded. A's are, you know, the top of the top, cream of the crop. B's, they're cool, definitely cool. You want them on your team, very positive, good stuff. C's, they give by. Come to work, clock in, clock out, get done, don't cause any problems. D's, you know, you, this is why you have HR, right? So with globalization, a lot of the C's and D's are gone. They're gone. They're out of here. You can outsource. You can find someone cheaper to do the same job. So suddenly, you have, with globalization, you're competing with A's and B's only. You don't have to watch out for the C's and D's. They're gone. So you're suddenly competing with the best of the best and people who are as good or better than you. That's your competition right there. So how do you stand out from that? How do you compete with A's and B's, right? Personal branding. A personal brand wrapped around you. People see you and they go, wow, that is Jesse Warden caliber, right? They start using you as like a noun in a sentence and they attend adjectives that are all positive. That's, that's how you stand out in globalization. That's how you compete with the A's, A's and B's. You have a brand wrapped around yourself. You get noticed. If, if uh, you have a brand, you're going to get noticed somehow. They're going to say, oh, that, that flex is really cool. That, uh, that must be something you did, right? That's, that's great. That's what you want to have happen. Um, most importantly, you want to be recognized and associated with something positive of your choosing. You can identify what you want to be. I want to be the best flash designer on the planet. Go make a portfolio site. Put all your hot flash up there. Advertise it on the forums. <clears throat> People are going to see that and say, yeah, it must be something uh, Too Advanced did, right? Something uh, Joshua Davis did. Right? They're associated with those cool flash. Right? That's, that's your choosing. You can choose to do that. Some people say it just happened. They just didn't understand they had the talent for it, and they didn't actively pursue it. Had they done so, it would have been a controlled and more powerful you know, brand associated with them, something that they could chose to do. Let's give an example of who's, who's a good personal brand that we can give an example of. Well, the first thing is Doug McCoon. We all know Doug McCoon in the flex world. Uh, when, What's, what's some things you think about with Doug McCoon? Well, the first thing is free flex components, right? He's always posting components to his blog that are cool. Flexlib, you see Flexlib? Oh, yeah, Doug McCoon works on that, right? Uh, honesty, no sugar coating, you think of Doug McCoon, right? So if you're looking for somebody to say, look, Doug, you know, Dobie's talking about this flex stuff. Uh, I'm just curious if you could give me the no nonsense, no marketing. What do you think? You can depend on Doug for that, right? That is a brand that he's created. Uh, whether he chose to or not. That is, that is a, a personal brand that Doug you know, has created. So when you think cool components and you think of honesty, that's what he's associated with. He chose to do that. That's a brand. Another brand, Grant Skinner. Okay? This is a, he, he's been in the industry a while. When you think of someone who, who really knows the, the flash player internals, you would think of Colin Mook, but you also think of Grant Skinner. Grant Skinner has constantly talked about things that he's learned on projects but the internals of Flash Player. So if you ever have a weird, just strange thing going on and you know you've debugged it through and through for weeks, 
you immediately think, you know, Grant Skinner probably knows this. He probably knows how it is. And that, that gets him business because they know Grant Skinner knows what he's doing if he knows how the flash fair works. Uh, he's, he's the epitome of hybrid. He's a good designer and a good programmer. He does both, and he, he brings them together, and that's what Flash does well, very well together. So Grant Skinner is associated with that, right? He creates useful tools, like tools and techniques. He's got a G Project, G Modeler. When you see something cool like that, you know, hey, Grant does those kind of things. He, he's pretty cool. Maybe we can uh, create something like that for us, right? Get some business. That, that brand is something he created, you know, his talent and his ability to put that on the web and talk about that stuff has enabled him, his brand, and then therefore business to come from that. Another one, Juan Sanchez, aka Scale9. Okay, we all know Scale9. He's got Scale9.com. He's got all the good uh, designs for the flex skins. You know, that was him. I mean, he associated himself with good flex design, showing that flex is not just gray. It's not just the Aeon theme. That's the default. It's not all flex apps look like flex apps. It's that you can skin these things and make them look great. You know, you don't have to just have some flash guy swim through and figure it out. You can create really good flex apps and you, if you're a good designer. That's empowering to people, and he created that brand. People feel empowered when they look at you know, scale9.com. How, how is that not good for your business? How is that not good for you? How is that, you know, that's great for your personal brand. That's something that he chose to do, and it's paying off nicely. There's a big, long checklist of personal branding. Basically, what I would think around 18 to 20 things that, because some of them are, are kind of old school, but I put them in there because you have to of the personal branding checklist. What are these things that you can do to help build your brand, to help sell you? How can you do that? First thing is you have to know what you want. If you don't know what you want, you don't know what you're striving for. If you don't know what you're striving for, you're walking around aimlessly like, well, that'd be cool to do, but you're not actually going anywhere. You have to have a destination. You can't reach a destination if you don't know where you're going. So you have to know what you want. And you want to say, that's what I want, and I'm going to get there. Right? You're empowered from that. So that's the most important thing. You need to be able to articulate what you do. It's good to know what you want. I want to be an awesome flex app creator. Okay, sounds good. So what do you do? I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a programmer. Yeah, I code like you know, web stuff. That's not cool, man. You got to be able to clearly articulate to people, depending on who they are, what you do. So if a CEO comes up to you, you say, I'm a computer programmer. You say it with confidence. You love this stuff. Don't be nervous about it. Say, I'm a computer programmer. That's right, baby. You know, feel good about it, right? You, but know that he's not going to understand maybe what a rich internet application flex designer is. He'll, you say computer programmer? That gives him or her the opportunity to ask you back. So what type of computer programming do you do? What language, right? It allows you to easily judge their knowledge ability. So you start high. Say, I'm a computer programmer. I'm a designer. I design for the web. I design in Flash for the web. I utilize these tools to bring them together, right? So be able to say what you do in a sentence. So if somebody asks you that, you know, use it with your friends. Say, what do you do? I do blah. You'd be surprised how many people stumble on that. The elevator pitch. This goes in line with being able to take what you do. If there was like, let's say, uh, I don't know, somebody really popular. Steve Jobs is in an elevator, and you wanted to work for Apple. And you're going down an elevator, so you basically have 10 seconds. To, he goes, well, hey, what do you do? You have 10 seconds to say to Steve Jobs what you do. Ready, go. That's an elevator pitch. Be able to describe what you do and why it's valuable in about 10 to 15 seconds or less. If you can do that, you'll, you'll always be prepared and no matter what situation you're at, you can just pull it out of your head. So be positive. No one likes someone who's negative. They want to be around people who bring them up, not who tear them down. You want to surround yourself with positive people. You want to feel good about what you're doing. Every situation that is a problem is not a problem, it's an opportunity. You want to be around positive people, good people. So be positive yourself. Don't be negative. No one wants to work with someone who's negative, who is always down. Cynicism's hard. You can fight it, but keep a positive attitude. Glass half full, right? That's, that's how you want to project yourself. People like positivity. Going back to personal brands, good example of a personal brand, Ryan Stewart. Every blog post, Care Bear Stare, man. He's always positive. People love to read Ryan Stewart's blog because they go, I do rich in applications. I'm having a hard time fighting this Ajax. You know, I just, it's hard. Oh, Ryan Stewart talks about how great you know, applications are. Oh, wow. You know, you would leave reading that and feel really good about what you do, right? That's the power of positivity. Ryan Stewart inspired a lot of, you know, millions of developers to feel good about working in Flash and Flex. How is that not great, right? That's the power of positivity. 
So number five, have a blog, website, LinkedIn, or some other online presence. You don't have to be on Facebook and MySpace and everything. Just something, something professional. I mean, LinkedIn is a good first start. That's fine. You know, a lot of people on LinkedIn. Just have something that you can be found on the interwebs, okay? Something. They have some online presence that you control, not other people. It's, it's your step into it. It doesn't have to be personal. It's just your name and you know, what you do. It doesn't even have to be where you live or your number. You don't have to do any of that. Just say, here's what I do and you know, whatever. If you don't provide contact information, people can't contact you. So you know, emails, multiple email addresses, that's something you can do. Uh, part two and number six, uh, business card. Man, that stuff's old school. The problem is when you go to conferences and people go, you got a card, you look stupid. Well, don't you just want to send me an email? No, I need a card, right? So you got, you got to have a business card. It's just, yeah, you got to do it. People still do it for some reason. Uh, multiple email addresses. It really helps to have multiple email addresses for a couple of reasons. Number one, multiple ways to get in contact with you. If you have different email addresses on different, and I don't mean everything through Gmail. I mean, this comes from this server, this comes from this server. This goes down, people and clients and family members can still contact you. It's very important to have that. Multiple ways to get contact. I love email and hate it at the same time. But I have you know, three different ones, so you can contact me in three different ways. If one goes down, I have a couple others. Um, phone. Phone is, uh, at least in the States, a very good way of bridging the gap when communication fails. Email, most pathetic way to communicate, especially in business and talking to other people and developers. Pick up the phone, talk it through. If you can't be on site, it's your number one friend in telecommuting. Uh, you need to plan for that, that you'll probably be on the phone more if you're telecommuting, talking to clients, talking to managers, talking to stakeholders, talking to developers. Got to have a phone because they're going to call you too. Signature. Signature is really like an email signature. It's basically your name and email address, or your name and email address and website, or your name, contact information, and a favorite quote, right? Something that is associated with you that people can identify. It's very important for coders, and I'll come to that in a minute. But again, it's supposed to personify you and be professional. The uh, tenth thing is logo. Do you have a logo? Some people don't see the value of it, but if you're a designer, it's very important. It's nice to have some visual image. That people see that and go, hey, that's you. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of an example of uh, like Aphex Twin. He always has that face. You, know, you immediately know it's him. Um, a lot of anim animators like Nectarine, they always have those certain styled characters, and you know, hey, that's, that's Nectarine style work, right? It doesn't matter if it's not, you just immediately think of Nectarine, right? So you have that, that image or that, that kind of logo style, people think of you. So it's, it's nice to have a visual image that represents you that can stand alone from text. A logo is very portable. You can make it a favicon in your browser. You can put it to an email signature. You can put it on a letterhead, a resume, you know, whatever, right? It's very portable. So something some important to have. 